he noticed some rather unusual features. Yes, there's Jesus Christ on the cross at the centre of this side, but he also noticed these strange writhing figures who don't seem to be explicable by any of the stories of the Bible. It turns out that what he rediscovered, with a little bit of help from his coachman, was one of the very few surviving masterpieces of Viking stone sculpture created here in England. The Gosforth cross would have looked very different in Viking times. Like the Uzeberg ship, it would have been painted in bright colours. And the carvings would not have been worn down as they are today. But even if they were easier to see, what they depict is still extremely mysterious. Richard Bailey is an archaeologist who has studied Viking Age sculpture in northern England. So Richard, are you able to help me decipher this extremely puzzling scene involving what seems to be an upside-down man on a horse, a prone figure here, I can't work out, is it a pig, a dog? A person, a deity? It's, it's quite deliberately um, a puzzle, a riddle. The whole monument is comparing, contrasting, uh, making you think about things. So Christ is there, and in a way that's the end of a world. That's the end of the world of the Old Covenant, or the end of the world of the, uh, of the Old Testament. But then there's another end of the world here, which is the end of the world of the old gods. Because the Viking. The Viking gods, the Ragnarok which tells the story of the giants and the forces of evil under the devil god Loki. And down here we've got the devil god Loki, who was bound by the gods and punished by them by having a serpent placed over his head and the poison dropped from its fangs onto his forehead. And he had this faithful wife, Sigyn, that's Sigyn just there, with a long trailing pigtail, just like a Viking Age woman. I thought Sigyn was a rabbit. <laughs> no, no, Sigyn is his wife. Right. I, I, and, I was and, saying a rabbit with and, its and long she, ears. She's holding a bowl and she uh, gets the, uh, stops the poison from dropping onto his head. But Loki breaks loose and leads the, the forces of evil in this great final battle. A final battle which involves people like Odin being swallowed by the wolf and uh, Odin's son, Vyvar, taking revenge on the wolf by breaking open the wolf's jaws and round on the other side, right at the very top, up above that figure of Christ, we've got Vyvar with his foot stuck in one jaw and pushing, wrenching the jaw up uh, with the other. The Gosforth Cross is a truly remarkable object. And even in the days of the Vikings, I suspect it was a bit of a challenge for everyone to understand it. This is Viking art making a bold statement. Fusing the old beliefs with the new, a collision of pagan and Christian iconography. What do you think of the object as a creation of the stonemason's art or craft or the sculptor's art and craft? This is one of the, the most accomplished craftsmen whose work has survived in this country. This chap is marrying up the traditions of stone carving in Anglo-Saxon England and also the kind of figural art of the Viking tradition. And he's pulling those two together. It's a very sophisticated monument. It seems almost certain that the artist who carved the Gosforth cross was working for a local Viking ruler who'd converted to Christianity. Inside the neighboring St. Mary's Church, there are some other striking examples of Viking stone sculpture from the same period. So this is a miniature Viking sculpture gallery? It is. We have two of the most stunning carvings you're going to see. These are remarkable carvings. They're what's called hogbacks. They were, they were grave monuments. Prestigious, you know, high, high status grave monuments. But this was above the tomb. This, this was above the tomb. The body, it, the body would lie below it. And what they'd seen, somehow or other, um, was those sh uh, solid shrines that were over the top of saints' bodies. In, in England. Exactly, and, and like, go, like, like Thomas the Becket's that's right, shrine. Yes, and it, and it goes right the way back to Roman sarcophagi. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so isn't that fantastic? Building shape monuments, but it's all done in the shape of Viking house with a curved roof on it. And then behind it, you've got another Ooh. hogback, um, much bigger, carved by the same man as carved the large cross outside. But it's got these interlacing serpents running along with men fighting them uh, within. No, no. no. You're, oh, you're, well, I've just and seen then, here. 
<laughs> well, this is here. We've got a crucifixion. This, this sort of face staring out at me. Yes. Well, you, that's a crucifixion which exactly matches the one that's outside on the cross outside, with that pear-shaped head uh, sunk into the shoulders, and a, a kirtle or a, a dress which uh, sort of goes out at goes out oh, the yes. corners. So it's Christ, Christ dressed in a Viking fashion. Uh, that's right. Yes. Well, they are wonderful things, isn't it? Great. You you can be in this nineteenth-century Gothic church looking at Viking tombstones inspired by yeah. medieval Christian versions of the Roman sarcophagus. There's That's an right. awful lot of unusual knottings. That's right, That's right. And, and enormously impressive carvings. I mean, these are huge things. Yeah. Uh, and the amount of effort involved in carving those things down. They've really committed to Christian burial. No, yes, more, yes. no more burial at sea in flames. No, no. Or... I, I want to be buried beneath the ground yes, yes. with a stone monument. That's right, and no more burying out in, in barrows in the, middle of, in the middle of the countryside either. Uh, they are behaving like the locals behave, uh, but still uh, looking back to and celebrating their Scandinavian ancestry. Yeah, how very, very English somehow. <laughs> yes. For now, the hybrid wonders of Christian-inspired Viking art were confined to the places in the British Isles where the Vikings settled. For the time being, most Vikings and Viking art were still pagan. It would be many years before Christianity would spread throughout the Viking homeland of Scandinavia. The greatest change was yet to come. returning to the British Museum to catch up on the preparations for the Viking exhibition. The last time I was here, the gallery was a construction site. But the builders have now left, and in their place, teams of curators are busy unpacking objects and putting them on display. So, <laughs> lots of packing crates. But big yes. changes, big changes. Yes, it's, it's come on a bit since you were last here. <laughs> well, the gallery's been built and there's something rather large in it. Yes, it doesn't look quite so much like a warehouse now. And as you see, the ship is in, uh, in full progress of reconstruction. The ship in question is Roskilde 6, a warship once large enough to carry a hundred Viking warriors. It was built around 1025, during the reign of King Canute, the Viking king who ruled Denmark and England. And it's made a special journey from the National Museum of Denmark for the exhibition. The total length of the keel is nearly 32 metres. The keel alone is longer than any other surviving Viking ship. Wow. Every part you can see is numbered here. And that's vitally important because everything has to fit together in the right place. We have a plan which oh, shows yeah. exactly where every part belongs. And the frame that it's uh, standing on has been shaped precisely to hold every piece in place. How long does it take you and your team to, to really... Well, I shouldn't yeah, put you yeah. on the spot because you're still doing it, yeah, but how long yeah. do you hope it takes? To build the ship now? Yeah. Well, it... It takes 10 working days to, to build a ship now, from, from the base to the, to the top of the stems. That's probably because you've got a bit of practice. I think it would take most people a bit longer. Yes, but, it's, <laughs> but it's also, it, it is because of the, uh, of the practice, but also because of the way it, everything has been built, because it's been designed to be easy to work with. Ah, from so, the start, so yes. do you think, in a sense, when you, when you reenact the making of the boat, and you can do it quite quickly. That shows how sophisticated the Vikings were in devising a method to make a boat quite quickly. Well, you know what? You could, you could say that because they were organised as well and they planned their work. Well, it's a wonderful object. Good luck with, with, you. your, with your work. Yes, <laughs> we mustn't thank interrupt you. you. Uh, ten days will become ten and a half. No, <laughs> oh, I don't think so. <laughs> Good oh. luck. The exhibition will display more than 300 artefacts many from lenders around the world. But there's one particular object I can't wait to see. It's from the 10th century and gives its name to a new style of Viking art, the Mammon style. This is one of the finest items, I would say, in this exhibition. It's a decorated axe head from Mammon in Denmark. It's made of iron 
and it's inlaid with silver and also here with gold. Gosh. And we have these bands interwoven with each other with spirals at the joints and then the thicker strands filled in with dots. In oh. fact, if we turn this over, the other side is even more impressive. There's um, a creature in there, isn't there? Yes, we've got a bird here. The head there and the body coming round. There's another of these spiral joints where the back leg joins the body. And then this long tail with long curling f tail feathers coming out behind. Could that be a peacock's train that's been tilted up? It's, it's possible. Certainly there are illustrations elsewhere in Viking art that have been interpreted uh, as peacocks, which is an allegory for vanity. And uh, certainly vanity would be appropriate enough uh, for anyone carrying an axe like this. Now, this is a battle axe, it seems to me. I That's mean, right. It's made for that purpose, not meant for chopping wood. No, this isn't at all. It's a weapon. Why would you have, if you were a Viking warrior, why would you have a wonderful peacock, if it is a peacock, on your axe? What purpose would that serve? This is a period in which weapons often have individual names and it ties into the concept of the warrior hero. It's not just about killing people in battle, it's knowing who's killed them. In a modern football match, yes, you want your team to win, but you want your name on the score sheet uh, at the end. <laughs> so I think there's... So you want everybody to see the name on the back of your shirt. So it, exactly. If you kill someone with the, with, with the axe known as the peacock... Exactly. An axe like that, that would catch the eye as you were fighting. If you're going to hack someone to death, then why not hack them to death with style and elegance? With the preparations for the Viking exhibition in full swing, I'm returning to Scandinavia. Around the time of the Mammon Axe, a new craze emerged in Viking art, the Viking picture runestone. This the Yelling Stone is the most famous example. Carved in the Mammon style, it shows Christ on the cross, and its runic inscription proclaims the king to have made the Danes Christian. I've come to the island of Ardelso, near Stockholm, to meet the nearest equivalent there is to a modern-day Viking artist. His name is Kala Rune Ristara, and he's taken up the challenge of reviving this Viking art form. I'm meeting Kalla on the Viking farm that he's building. It's all set up to be the perfect setting for carving runestones in the old, time-honoured way. Do you want to actually live like a Viking? You are going to experiment to live like a Viking, is that the That's idea? the best way to learn. Yeah. <laughs> First I show you the house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we start building this house last year. The inside will be great. Also, we have the boat here for the winter. And how will you stay warm? And where our boat are standing just now, it's going to be an open fire. What, in the middle? Yeah, it's a, a long fire. A long fire. How, how will the house not just be full of smoke? It's going to be. It's going to be full of smoke? Yeah. <laughs> And that's OK. The, the Vikings... No, you can stand here. We're going to have open places in um, the roof yeah. at the end, both ends. We hope uh, the smoke goes out. So I was hoping you might show me how you, how you go about the business of creating a runestone. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see. It's a little bit up here. Kalla has been carving runestones for over 20 years. His most prestigious commission was to carve a runestone in memory of the Viking explorer Leif Erikson, who's thought to have discovered North America 500 years before Columbus. Some of Kalla's runestones are replicas of those from the Viking Age. But most, like the one he's currently working on, are his own design. Here's the runestone. I'm carving it just now. Wow. It's great. How long have you been working on it? This is a stone long time project. Long time project. How long is long truly, time? Truly. I start with this 1996. That's a long time. Yes. 
<laughs> wow. But would you mind showing me how you actually carve? Yeah, of course. I have a sledgehammer. It looks like a shoe cleaning kit. <laughs> 